guys, today we're going to be doing three looks with the Jeffree Star Mini Breaker palette. If you have not already seen what this palette looks like somehow, this is it. So it's basically just a purple palette with some pops of orange and mustard. So I'm really excited about this. I mean, I've already done the looks when I'm filming this, at least two of them. So I already know what the looks are going to look like. So we are going to be doing this voiceover style, which I don't usually do that in my three looks one palette videos, but I was just kind of on a roll after my 10 looks one palette with the large draw breaker palette. So if you haven't seen that, I will link that in the corner for you so you can go check that out. But basically we're going to be doing three looks with this today and afterwards I'm going to just tell you my thoughts on the palette, do like a mini review. So if you're interested, keep watching and let's get into look number one. Alright guys, let's get into look number one. So I'm starting off by priming my eyes with my MAC Paint Pot and Soft Ochre like I always do. And I'm just putting this all over my lids. I'm not going to set this because I find that shadows just perform better when you don't set your eyeshadow primer. So to start off, I'm going to dip into Purple Punch and I'm going to put that on the outer corner of my eye. And the reason why I'm starting with my darkest shade and my outer corner first is that I find especially shadows like purple have a tendency to get patchy really fast. So I want to make sure that all of the purple that I'm laying down is not going to be layered on top of something that already has shadow on top of it. Like I want the purple to be the first layer on my eye. I'm also taking the same shadow down to my lower lash line about two-thirds of the way in as well as kind of blending everything out as I go. I'm then going into foreplay and I'm going to use that shadow to sort of blend out the purple that I just put down and I like going darkest to lightest a lot of the time especially with shadows like pinks and purples especially with purples. I just find that everything blends out so much smoother and ends up so much more pigmented that way. I'm then taking Bite Me, which is a beautiful dark purple shimmer. This shimmer is also in the large drawbreaker palette, so I've already played with this one and I know I like it. So I'm just placing this in the outer corner of my eye, basically on top of where I put down that dark purple. Not because it was looking patchy or anything, but I just sometimes like doing that. If there is a shimmer that is the same kind of color that the darkest matte that I put in my outer corner, I kind of like to layer a little bit of the shimmer on top of it because I just find that everything kind of just blends together more seamlessly that way. I'm then taking my favorite shadow in this palette, which is called Slice, and it's a beautiful kind of golden orange, and I'm just placing this on my lid, sort of creating a bit of a faux cut crease here. I'm trying to be a little bit precise with this. Not necessary at all, but sometimes I like the look of cut creases without having to do a cut crease. So I'm then going to go into Orange Crush, and I'm putting this on the first half of my lower lash line, just to add a bit of an extra pop of color there. Because I don't know, I just felt like using the shadow. I really like it. I think it's a super pretty kind of neon-y coral. And then for my waterline, I'm going in with my Shockwave Neon Liner from LA Girl. I will make sure to link everything that I use on my eyes down in the description box. And then doing some liner and mascara off camera because that is boring to watch. And then I'm going to, for a lipstick, put on two different lip products. And the first one is going to be by Sorme. And it is their non-stop moisturizing matte liquid lipstick in the shade Enchanted. I love this. It's one of my absolute favorite lipsticks. And I'm also going to be using one of my all-time favorite glosses. This is Fuzzy by Fenty. I love this. This is definitely the kind of look that I like to do when going out for, you know, like a date night or something like this. I tend to always gravitate towards purples. And my husband really likes purples on me. So this to me is like... The epitome of a date night look so let's get into look number two this is going to be a little bit more intricate if you will so i'm going to start off by taking hot fudge which is deep brown and i'm placing this in the outer corner of my eye i know the order in which i'm doing stuff in this look is very all over the place i'm sorry about that but that's kind of how i do my makeup i never really plan out my looks ahead of time i sort of just wing it and take it as it comes so for the next color, I'm going to go into Double Scoop, and I'm placing this in the first half of my crease. I'm using my Morphe E36 brush to do this with, and I'm sort of just blending as I go as well. I'm then going into Orange Crush, and I'll be placing that next to where I put down Double Scoop. So in the middle of my crease, I'm connecting it to the first kind of orangey yellow shade that I put down, blending those two together. And then I'm also making sure to leave some room for a third shadow in my crease here that's going to go on the outer part of my crease. And for that, I'm going to use Foreplay, which is a beautiful pink shade. And like you can see, I'm basically just placing this in the upper part of the last part of my crease. Did that make sense? I think that made sense. I'm also making sure to blend this into the brown shade that I put down and that everything on the outer part of my eye is looking blended. And for this look, I'm going to go in with a bit more of my paint pot and put that all over my lower lash line because I just, I find that it really helps these shadows to stick to my lower lash line. A lot of them are a little bit too powdery and just don't stick properly. So I'm going to go into Purple Punch 
and I'm going to put that on the outer part of my lower lash line and I'm packing on the color quite a bit to make sure that I get it as pigmented as I am able to. I'm also sort of blending it into my outer corner. I'm then dipping into bubble gum and I'm placing bubble gum in the first part of my lower lash line here. I really like having more than one shadow on my lower lash line if you can't tell. I'm then going to take my P. Louise base and I'm going to do a half cut crease this time. And the way that I get my lines sharp with my cut creases is basically that I'm using the shape of my brush to help me. You can see I'm placing my brush down and then I pull down instead of trying to drag it from the inner corner to the outer part of where my cut crease is because I do have very hooded eyes and you know I also have some loose skin because I'm not that young anymore so I just find this to be a very easy way to get everything to look nice and smooth. I'm also just taking my finger and patting out the edges here. Then for my lid color, I'm actually going to go ahead and put a matte all over and that's going to be bubblegum, which is the same shadow that we put down on the first part of my lower lash line here. And it took a lot to build up the shadow. You can see how many times I'm dipping into the pan here and really packing on the shadow, but once I got it to be opaque, it's looking really nice. And I'm then just going back in with that dark brown again and making sure that these two colors are blended in together. And I'm also going to go ahead and take that duochrome shade afterwards and I'm going to layer this on top of these two mattes. I find that this oral shade is just not really that opaque so it just performs better when you spray it and then layer it on top of matte. So that is what I'm going to do and I'm using the shadow to kind of bind the two colors together and make sure that the transition between the two mattes are looking nice and smooth. And once I've done that, I'm taking my Warrior Glitter Shadow from Flower Beauty. This is the gold one. It's called Bomb. And I'm using a small eyeliner brush here and just placing this right in between where I cut my crease just to separate that pink and the kind of orangey shade. I find that if you have kind of similar shadows on your lid and in the crease, putting some glitter in between really helps separate them. And I think this did a really good job doing so. I'm also taking my Crystalline Liquid Shadow by Pixie and I'm putting this above that pink that I put on my first part of my lower lash line just because I guess I just wanted some glitter. I'm always in the mood for glitter, you know? Glitter is just fun. Then off camera I'm putting on some liner and mascara as always. And then for lips I'm going to use one of my Mako Sweetie glosses. I know these are discontinued. I'm so sorry I keep using them but I absolutely love them. This one is in the shade Peach Pie. I don't know why they are not making these anymore because they are fantastic. And that's going to be look number two. I really like how this turned out. So here are the close-ups so you can see it a little bit better. Obviously not like a very simple look that you can do on an everyday basis unless you have a lot of time, but sometimes it's just fun to spend a little extra time on your makeup. So let's move into the last look now. I'm gonna start off again this look by taking hot fudge and I'm going to put that into my crease this time. Not just the outer corner. I am eventually going to put this in my outer corner as well, but I'm starting off by just building this up in my crease, but not so high up that I don't have room for another shadow to blend this out with. Like I said, I'm also putting it in my outer corner. And then to blend this out, I'm gonna use double scoop and I'm taking this on a small tapered fluffy brush and I'm basically just running this right above where I put down that brown and I really want to make sure that the shadow is showing up. So I'm going back and forth quite a bit and really building the shadow up and blending it out. For some reason, I've just been really loving going darkest to lightest lately. I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I do this all the time. Sometimes I will start with my transition shade, but lately I've just been doing this. Then for my lid, I'm actually going to use a little bit of Orange Crush and I'm going to place that sort of in the outer corner just to make sure that I have something underneath here that I can blend in the shimmer into because I like having more than just one shadow on my lid. So after I put that down, I'm just going to go in with Slice. I'm going to spray that with some Fix Plus and I'm going to put that on the rest of my lid where I don't have any shadow yet. And you can see how when I layer this above that orange, it almost looks like I have an orange shimmer on my lid as well and it just makes the gradient a lot more smooth. Smooth. I'm then going back into hot fudge and I'm going to put that a little bit more in my outer corner here just to make sure that it's as intense as I want it to be. I also make sure that everything in my crease and the outer corners are looking blended and then I'm taking it down to my lower lash line as well and I'm just using a smudging brush to do so with. I'm taking this about two thirds of the way in and then leaving room for oral which is going in the first part of my lower lash line here. As you can tell I really do like to put a shimmer in the first part of my lower lash line. I just find that it really makes it pop and I thought that this look was kind of boring, kind of neutral for my liking so I wanted to spice it up a bit and I really feel like I achieved that. Then lastly for shadows, I'm going to go back into double scoop and I just want to make sure that everything is looking nice and blended and I'm also pulling the shadow down to sort of blend out the hot fudge that I have on the lower lash line as well as the outer corners and making sure that it is the way that I like it to be. 
Then for my waterline, I just need to use Prans. I use this all the time. It's one of my favorite eyeliners. It's from ColourPop. It's just a beautiful light blue shade. And I also just felt like this went really well with that kind of blue-purple duochrome. I'm then putting on some liner and mascara off camera because you don't need to watch that. However, something that is not boring is lipsticks. And for this look, I decided to go with Verona by Ofra. This is one of my favorite browns. I'm not sure I love this with the eye look. I feel like maybe a more cool tone lipstick would have looked better, but I don't have that many cool tone brown lipsticks. So this is just what we are dealing with. And that is going to be the third look all complete. So let me know what you think of the looks. I am actually really happy with how these looks turn out. And now that you've seen all my looks, here are my thoughts on the Mini Breaker palette. So those were all of the three looks with the Mini Breaker palette. Let me know down below which one was your favorite. I think the second one was my favorite. I don't know, I actually really like them all despite this last one being a bit of a neutral look for my liking. I still think it came out really pretty and I don't know, I like it. So as for my thoughts on this palette, I definitely have some thoughts. So. Just before I forget, I just want to say that all of the pinks and the purples in this palette really stains my eyes. I know that not everybody has problems with pinks and purples staining, but I really do. And these are some of the worst offenders that I think I've ever had. So it's not really something that bothers me that much, but I, I always want to mention it because I know you know, other people have problems with staining as well. So other than that, I really like this palette. I think it's a really good palette. My one complaint would be that all of these shadows take a really long time to build up to be the intensity that I want them to be. So if you are someone who doesn't really enjoy like super full pigmentation right away and you like to take it a bit slower, maybe you like a bit more of a wash of color than something that's really intense and in your face and like true to pan, then you're probably going to love this palette. But for me, I just feel like it takes so long to get the result that I want with this palette. And I kind of had the same experience with the Jawbreaker palette. I don't think that any of these palettes are going to be the kind of palettes that I will reach for if I want to do a quick look because I need to really take my time with these. They take a long time to build up. Some of the shadows don't stick to my lower lash line at all unless I put down an eyeshadow primer. So I definitely need to do that, especially with this pastel right here, which is also in the Jawbreaker palette. So other than that though, I think the quality of this is really good. I never had any problems with any patchiness or anything. They all blend it out eventually. Uh, some of them take a little longer than others to blend out, but overall, I think the quality of this palette is really nice. I will say that I don't think that the duochrome is uh, one of my favorite duochromes I honestly think is kind of shit. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but I just, I'm not really impressed by this. I find this to be incredibly sheer, and I have so many other duochromes similar to this in my collection that I think are so much better. Not saying it's not like a pretty shadow, it's pretty, but for me, I like something that's a little bit more intense and has a little bit more oomph, if that makes sense. And I feel like Yes, you can use this on its own. It's definitely going to be a lot better layered on top of something else. But even layered on top of something else, it's just not that impactful. It's not, like I said, it's not like other shadows that I have in my collection that I like a lot more. But if this is like your first ever duochrome, you're probably going to love it. But for me, someone who has a lot of eyeshadow and someone who likes to try out a lot of like indie brands, and indie brands tend to be really good at coming up with super like different and unique and intense eyeshadows. I just, I'm not really that impressed by this duochrome. So other than that though, like I said, I do really like this palette. I think the quality of it is really, really good. It's just not my favorite kind of formula. So that's going to be, you know, my thoughts on this palette. Let me know what you think of this palette. I feel like a lot of people are really going to like this. I do think that the color story is really good. Another thing that I should probably mention is that be a little bit careful with uh, some of these masks if you're trying to blend them together because uh, purple and yellow are complementary colors. Now this isn't like a true yellow, but even trying to mix this into the purple, they are going to muddy up a little bit just because of that. So just maybe something to keep in mind, just try to separate the two and not blend them into each other and have something in between to blend them out if that's what you're trying to do. So that will be my thoughts on this palette. So yeah, thank you so much for watching as always. If you want to see some similar content to this, I will pop some up on the screen for you to go check out. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.